Vibrational Medicine is a podcast to bring awareness to the various natural wellness practices and treatments available. I am your host, Ash Neumeister, and these conversations are born out of my curiosity to learn more about the technologies available to us to stay in our optimal, vital, healthy, and natural state for our entire life, regardless of aging and all of the challenges of living in our modern day world. We will discuss topics covering how to stay healthy in mind, body, and spirit. Let's take a moment for one deep breath and then enjoy the conversation. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Vibrational Medicine with Ash. In this episode, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into getting to know me and why I'm doing this podcast and what exactly vibrational medicine is and for me to share a little bit more about my personal practices that I use in my life that have kept me at a high vibration, kept me healthy and feeling good in my life. So let's start by sharing a little bit about why I'm doing this podcast and where the idea came from. I was actually at a sound bath. Um, It's gosh, it's probably, it was last summer, so about six months ago at least, at the Integratron in Joshua Tree. And if anyone knows me, they know that Joshua Tree is one of my favorite places on the whole planet. And especially the Integratron, which is this amazing structure that I highly recommend looking up and doing research and learning more about this place. And it's a magical place and they do crystal bowl sound healings as well as different events. And I went for a private event and during this sound bath, I had this idea to launch a podcast and I was planning on it being only on sound and sound healing. But then over time, I realized that I have so many other interests and know so many people that work in other kinds of vibrational medicine that I wanted to expand it and just really bring awareness around these various technologies and practices that really, I think, are essential for our health and wellness at this point on the planet. And also, I'm really curious uh, myself, you know, just wanting to talk to all these people that are up to these awesome things in the world and learn more about how I can utilize these practices and really stay in an optimal, healthy state forever, you know, regardless of aging and just living a high quality of life, even though, you know, I'm getting older. So uh, that was the beginning of it. And you know, really just getting curious about what kind of people I would want to invite and what kind of things I want to share. I also was inspired by a book that I read by Dr. Richard Gerber, and it's a book all about vibrational medicine. And his definition of vibrational medicine is an evolving viewpoint of health and illness that takes into account the many forms and frequencies of vibrating energy like atoms, that contribute to the multidimensional human energy system. So he really focuses on using different living remedies like crystals or plants, sunlight, different foods, um, acupuncture, homeopathy, and things like that, which we'll definitely be getting into on this podcast. And then I also am expanding the definition for purposes on this podcast and things that we're going to be covering to include, you know, practices and mindsets and beliefs and research and things that I've utilized in my own life to just maintain a high vibration. And what does that even mean, a high vibration? And to me, it means, you know, well, first of all, you have to accept that we're all vibrating. We're all energetic beings, that everything is constantly moving. There is no such thing as a frozen, solid matter. It's um, all energy. And so we can use different practices and technologies to alter our vibration. And when we're in a high vibration, certain things cannot exist, like um, certain diseases or 
uh, fear, for example, or different thought patterns, self-deprecating behavior, um, or, you know, and then when you get into the higher vibration, you're able to live more of a joyful life and see yourself as a powerful co-creator on this planet and really create whatever you want and all of your desires, as well as being healthy, right, in mind, body, and spirit. So all of these different practices, are, some of them are ancient, you know, like breath work and sound healing. Those are the two that I utilize the most in my life, as well as I'm a facilitator of those. So I know the most about them and, you know, very ancient practices, but also have contemporary application and different ways that we can use them to support us in this day and age. So we'll be getting into all different kinds of topics relating to, to health and wellness and natural ways of staying healthy and focusing more on the preventative medicine than the treatment. We'll get into some treatment things as well, but um, really just focusing on how to stay healthy. And a little bit about me is that I am uh, I'm from the Midwest and I moved out to California about 11 years ago and started to drop deeper into my spiritual practices through different experiences that I had with in, within communities out here, like the Kirtan community, community and ecstatic dance and um, agape and all of these different spiritual centers that we have access to out here and just started to ask myself bigger questions about, you know, who am I, what's my purpose and all these things and ended up traveling um, for about six months in 2012 and went to Thailand and India and did some studying while I was there um, on Reiki and uh, learned how to play the harmonium and learned a lot more about yoga and mantra and and started to take some time to really focus on my personal growth and that's i i guess i i'm addicted to personal growth to be honest (laughs) i'm always consuming podcasts and audiobooks and doing workshops and learning more and more and i think that it's my quest to really get closer to my authentic truth and to let go of all of the shit that's holding me back, all of these beliefs and um, trauma and the collective and in my ancestry and and so that I can really be of service in just being a vessel for whatever needs to come through me for the upliftment of this planet and being a vessel of divine love and really getting becoming clearer and clearer so that I have no more blocks in my body and so that we can so that I can become more of a a beacon of light I guess for the world and and really courageously move forward in love and you know that can be challenging in this day and age with so much happening in the world And so this is my offering of creating more awareness and conversation around these incredibly helpful tools and a little bit, some of it's going to be maybe a little against the status quo or challenging to some beliefs, especially if you rely solely on Western medicine. And that's okay. You know, I'm here to to do that too, just to ask questions and to bring these topics into conversation so that's really my goal and also I am a now I'm a breathwork facilitator and a sound healer and I focus mainly on teaching people how to use their own voice as a sound healing instrument I do do sound baths as well with Tibetan singing bowls and other healing sound healing instruments Um, but really I'm passionate about toning and overtoning and teaching people how to use their voice for healing for themselves and people in their lives and I also facilitate group breathwork sessions. I've been doing that for about six years and I've facilitated for tens of thousands of people at this point. And I'm always, always humbled by the power of breath and what a difference that can make in our lives when we just incorporate a little bit of conscious breathing. 
So I'll do a separate podcast on those, and I'm going to be interviewing a lot of my mentors, which I'm excited about. My next episode is going to be with Wayne Perry, who is my uh, main mentor when it comes to sound healing with the voice. So for the last part of this podcast, this first episode, I really wanted to just share a little bit more about the ways that I personally stay in a high vibration and um, different practices that have made a huge difference in my own life. And I also work in the entertainment industry, so I'm a music supervisor and I work full time. I work long ass hours sometimes. And so a lot of these practices were born out of, well, I needed them essentially to stay healthy and sane during really potent, what could be potentially high stress environments, you know, with crazy deadlines and lots of high expectations and everything that goes along with working in the entertainment industry. And so um, these are really helpful for anyone, you know, working in any field. I don't want this podcast to seem like woo woo or, you know, too far out there. It's going to be really practical things as well as you know, mind um, challenging some people's minds, but for the most part, I want it to be accessible and practical. So we're going to get into some of that now. Um, so I think the there's two things that made the biggest impact in my life over the last few years. And the first one is practicing gratitude. And I really believe that gratitude is the highest vib- vibratory feeling. And so when you are constantly looking for things to be grateful for your mind or your your mind is is looking for those things constantly and so you're always looking for the the positive side or how good things are and when you focus on that you call in more of that and it's a subconscious rewiring of your brain really when you have this default of looking for the positive or looking for the lesson or looking for what you have and having this abundance mentality instead of the opposite and and so something as simple as you know every day in the morning thinking of three things that i'm grateful for or saying grace before each time i eat and really giving gratitude to the plants animals and people that went into getting that food onto my plate and i've you know i've written my own little blessing that i do every time i eat and i encourage you to do that as well but really building in these gratitude practices as a ritual so that you do it consistently throughout your day. I was in a women's circle for many years and that was the way we would always start our calls is everyone would go around and share what they're grateful for. And that was when it was a consistent weekly thing for me to be sharing these with other people in my life. And so it really became a practice and a way of always looking at gratitude Um, seeking the gratitude and seeking um, another way of saying it is conscious celebration which uh, Reverend Michael Beckwith was talking about this this um, month at Agape and it's it is a practice you know it's not always easy to find the silver lining or something to be grateful for but there is always something even if it's just I'm grateful to be alive So that has been the number one thing. And then the second is also putting self-care as my number one priority and putting myself, my health and wellness first before anything else because I can't show up powerfully or feel good if I'm not taking care of myself first. And I know that this has been a little challenging for some people, especially, you know, people that are parents, they have kids to take care of so often the kids needs come before yours but you can't be a good parent if you're not taking care of yourself if you're drained or you're showing up tired to spend time with your kids then it's not going to be quality time and so it it really is there's no other way you have to put yourself first and that can be by starting small and working your way up I think this last year was really me and my um, year of getting mastering self-care and getting to know myself on a deeper level and knowing what I need. And so some examples would be, you know, well, first of all, putting my physical health first. So for example, I create these rituals. I, I love rituals because I'm a creature of habit and it helps me to remember to do things. 
So for example, I, I have a green drink every day. Like I make a smoothie in the morning and you, I put uh, vitamin greens and spirulina in my smoothies. And, um, you know, if I don't have the time to actually like put all the ingredients in and make a smoothie, I also have a green blend that has collagen in it and wheatgrass and all these things that I need for my nutrition so that I know that even if throughout the day I'm rushing and not able to maybe eat that well, like a full meal or anything, I'm still getting the nutrition that I need. And that's really important. Um, The other thing is I love teas and elixirs, and so I have all kinds of healthy drinks that I drink throughout the day. And you know, you can make a thermos of these and bring them with you to work, or um, just have a ritual of it in the morning. And I don't drink coffee anymore, so I I use a uh, different elixirs that have you know mushrooms in them, like chaga or. Um, even like a turmeric latte is really good. I have all kinds of recipes for these. So if you're interested, you can always email me and I'm happy to share them with you. And the other thing in nutrition wise is making sure that I get omegas. So omegas are so essential for our health. And if you don't take any other supplement, take your omegas. And not all fish oils are treated equally. So make sure you're getting a good source, but they're essential for our health and our brain and you can just do 15 minutes of study online and see that our brain diseases and alzheimer's and dementia and things are at epidemic levels as well as stress and anxiety and depression and all these things are related to our brain health and so if you just start by getting omegas it will make a huge difference and including if you're you know if you're into meditation and spiritual practices and doing ceremony and all these things if you're not eating properly you're not going to get the full benefit of these these practices like nutrition is incredibly important and you know it's harder and harder to find nutrition in our food these days so you really do have to make an effort to make sure you're getting in the proper nutrition including eating organic and seeing spending a little bit more on organic food is an investment in your health it is part of this preventative care and it's so so important The other thing with physical health, obviously, is getting exercise and doing yoga specifically because you really get to stay, um, you know, stretching is even just if it's stretching, you don't have to do actual yoga class or anything, but making sure that you can keep up with your mobility as we're getting older, it's super important, especially if you're like just lifting weights all the time, you have to stretch as well and do some yoga or you're going to lose flexibility and have issues later in life. The other thing with physical health is proper rest. So I am a professional relaxer. <laughs> I've, I've owned that now. I work really, really hard during the week and I spend all of my free time, not all, but most of it, making sure that I'm getting the proper rest. So I I get eight hours minimum a night of sleep and I get a massage or go to the Korean spa or um, go to the float tank all of these things that I've learned, or acupuncture is another really good one, that are incredibly relaxing. And, you know, it takes like an hour or go to a sound bath, you know, do some breath work, go to a workshop, these things that are meant for relaxation. Because often we live in this fight or flight mode and it's because of the environment that we live in. We live really busy lives, a lot of us. We live in, especially if you live in a big city. And so you're constantly on just go, 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 go. And if you aren't breathing properly, which a lot of us are not, you're not stimulating your parasympathetic nervous system, which happens when you take longer exhales. If you do any sort of breathing patterns with longer exhales on the end, it's going to stimulate the relaxation state, which is your parasympathetic nervous system. So if you're constantly in overdrive and just go, 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 you don't take time to rest, you're not getting enough sleep, you're not eating well, all of these things lead to chronic stress. And as we, most of us know, that is a huge cause of dis-ease or disease. And so it's essential to be a happy, healthy, vital person to have a stress management, a stress reduction practice and finding out what that is for you and making it a number one priority. You know, at least once a, a week, you know, for an hour, 
go get a massage or take a bath or get a foot massage or whatever it is, you know, find out what your ritual is. And I recommend doing these on Friday nights. If you worked all week long, it's the best way to end your week and then set you up for a great weekend. And then after that is, you know, mental health as part of a self-care priority. So really starting to notice when your mind is a little off or you're having a hard time with the the cycling thoughts or the um, obsessive thinking about things or worrying or, you know, just starting to build a relationship with your mind where you can check in and and do the necessary practices to to get your mind right again. And, you know, meditation is obviously the best way of doing this. There's so many different forms of meditation, and I recommend that you explore them until you find which ones work for you. And breath work and sound healing are a form of meditation as well that you can always use. Also, it's really important to create a sense of connection with spirit. And for me, I do that through ceremony. And a ceremony is really just a event that has an an intention and it has a beginning a middle and an end and this could be something you do by yourself you know you can do a full moon ceremony or you can do an intention setting ceremony or even in a group setting you know there's many different kinds Uh, one that i do here is called a sweat lodge and it's a lakota ceremony where you sing songs the lakota songs and you pray and you're in a group of people usually and you're inside of a sweat lodge so it's obviously very hot and so it's purifying with all of the sweating but you can look around and find different uh, events or communities in your area or you can even look online and learn how to create different kinds of ceremony for yourself and also i am really into sound healing obviously like I mentioned a few times and one new area of this that has expanded for me in the last year is light language and learning how to really get out of the way and just be a channel for whatever sounds want to come through me and one person I recommend checking out is Judy Satori and she has all kinds of transmissions and um, information about light language if you're interested in diving into that a little bit deeper So those are the main things when it comes to my mental health that really have made a difference. And all of those things are overlapping with spiritual health. You know, it's super important to make sure that you have a practice that keeps you spiritually healthy as well, whether that's going to church or, you know, some sort of gathering or event or even just doing your own personal practice that really helps you maintain a connection to that sense of something greater call it God, love, spirit, consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Um, But it's important that we have that connection and feel supported and that we're not alone. Another really important thing that I've incorporated into my life and that I've, you know, know the importance of in uh, maintaining a high vibration is the sense of community. And, you know, it's really important for us to feel like we belong. It's essential actually for our happiness you know when we are feel alone we can get depressed and there's all kinds of studies on this and you know especially as women you know back in the day we would die if we were left alone we had to be a part of a tribe we had to work together and it that still exists within our reptilian brain with you know we believe that on in a subconscious level that sometimes when we're left or we're not part of something that we're going to die and that we're not safe. And so creating these communities is super important. I'm doing a whole podcast on this as well um, in a few months. And, you know, we it's important to surround yourself with other like-minded people and people that are always growing and striving to embody their highest expression. You know, it's it's easy to get down the rabbit hole of all of the shit that's happening in the world. And so it's really important to have gatherings and people that you can talk to 
you know, with uh, positivity and um, similar values and ideas as you. And, you know, like I said, going to agape is a one way for me or, you know, a lot of people that go to church can feel this as well. Or you can create a women's circle or um, a place where you just meet up with some friends every quarter or something to have dinner, make dinner together and talk about life and really maintain that sense of connection and belonging. It's also important to have people that you can create real intimacy with. You know, if you don't have a partner or even if you do, you know, it's important to really have true intimacy where you can feel like you can really express yourself and you can be heard and you can be seen and accepted for who you are. And this is really important. I know that when I uh, go weeks on end of working really long hours or just not spending time with my friends and family, then I can start to get depressed. So it's really important in our overall health and well-being to be a part of a community. And this can include mentors and teachers and going to class as well as another great way of creating that community in your life. The next thing I want to talk about is environment. So this is a newer realization for me, I would say in the last year or so of really becoming aware of how much I'm affected by my environment. And, you know, this means like the house that you live in, your bedroom, your car, your office, or anywhere that you just spend a lot of time. And it's really important to for that to stay clean and to not have clutter everywhere and to have beautiful things surrounding you, things that inspire you. Uh, you can create a vision board. Some people are really into that. Um, but really just a place, for, first of all, where you feel safe and a place for you to feel inspired and to also create a sense of the sacred in your surroundings, you know, like by having an altar. And an altar is really just a collection of items or pictures or poems or anything that means something special to you that remind you of what's important. And maybe it can be an offering to something. You can do altars based on the elements or, you know, an altar for a specific person or a situation or anything really. But uh, it's important to have these items that are sacred. And you can also use candles or burn sage or Palo Santo, uh, use crystals, you know, really just having something in your surroundings that bring that sense of sacred of sacredness into your home and into your surroundings. Another important piece that some people might disagree with is don't watch the news. You know, a piece of our environment is the media, right? And what we're surrounded with and what we're hearing, what we're listening to. And the news is all fear-based. It's always reporting on what's going wrong in the world, the awful things that are happening, And it's rare to find positive news. I mean, we can seek that and find it. There are people that are bringing that to the awareness more and more, thank God. But the majority of it is still very fear-based. And it's very, um, creates a sense of separation and uh, to be afraid of each other. And a lot of this is perpetuating this uh, increasing degree of separation that we feel amongst the people on this planet. So I don't watch the news. I find out what I need to find out through conversation and people that I trust. And, uh, you know, the really big important things that do come across my into my awareness, I should, should say. But for the most part, I avoid the news. And same thing with TV shows and movies and music. Really listen to what you're consuming and is it bringing positivity into your life is, or is it bringing more fear? And there's a lot of dark movies and TV shows that have a lot of violence and all of that stuff really affects your vibration and affects the way that you see the world. And our consciousness is very impressionable. And so really surrounding yourself with positivity and beauty 
has, well, that's helped me anyways. I'm just speaking from personal experience. And I know that, you know, for example, when I'm listening to really inspiring music all day long or medicine music or watching funny shows and things like that, it definitely has an impact on my happiness and how I feel that day. You know, the power of song is, well, so powerful. And we can use that to the benefit, you know, of really bringing in light and upliftment and um, healing, you know, through the music that we listen to and surround ourselves with. The other thing is our clothes and what we wear. If you don't feel good in what you're wearing, it's going to affect your vibration. It's going to affect how you feel that day. And so really evaluating your clothes, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel when you're wearing something? And if it's below an eight, get rid of it. You know, this is something that I'm in the process of right now and totally redoing my wardrobe. And, you know, this can change from year to year, you know, things that we, we change. And so our, the, what we want to be wearing and the way we express ourselves through our clothes and our jewelry and accessories and things can shift too. Same thing with the colors that we wear can shift. And so just don't be attached to maybe what you used to like a year ago. It could have shift, you know, like really just take a moment to see how good you feel in the things that you wear. And this can be a gradual process like it has been for me. You know, I don't have like all this extra money just to go out and buy a whole new wardrobe, but I can be do it piece by piece, you know, and really find things that make me feel really good that when I'm wearing them. The other thing that I feel like is essential in maintaining a, a high vibration is staying inspired and continuing to learn. So I really do feel that if, we stop learning, we or st- we stop growing, and we start the opposite, which is dying, right? So it's like really maintaining this wonder and excitement and inspiration in our life. So finding new things to learn, finding uh, podcasts or audiobooks or join an art class or um, just be continually inspired. And for me, I listen to podcasts all the time, like when I'm driving or audiobooks. Uh, when I go for hikes or go for on walks, I'll listen to them as well. And finding time to continue to learn. And there's so many different online class portals or online universities now to like Udemy, it's U-D-E-M-Y, and all other kinds of online universities to continue to take classes and to learn new things and stay inspired. Another thing that has really supported me is coming up with my non-negotiables. Like what are the things in life that I'm not willing to compromise and that I make my priorities because I know that they make me happy and healthy and stay in a high vibration. These are things that at all costs I'm not willing to give up. You know, I think it's good for us to have three and they can be like touchstones so that when we realize that we're starting to compromise those things that we're too busy or moving too fast and that we need to slow down and create more time for our priorities. So, for example, one could be sleep, getting a proper amount of sleep. Another is eating healthy And for me, a big one is dancing, like time to go and dance. That's my favorite form of expression. So I need to dance often. And I built that into my schedule. Another thing would be time with friends and getting clear on like how often that is for you. You know, do you feel like you need to meet up with your girlfriends or guy friends like every other week or get specific, you know, and really put it into your schedule? Or maybe it's a massage or for me at one point it was making sure that I have one day in my month where I don't schedule anything. Like just a day to do nothing, to have no schedule and to go with the flow. Uh, These are all really important things to have in our life and they can change, you know, maybe doing non-negotiables every month and shifting that and noticing what really supports you. And just making it a priority and it's non-negotiable. I'm making this super important in my life. And the last thing that I want to talk about 
is essential oils. So I came across high quality essential oils, I would say about three years ago, um, where I really started incorporating them into my everyday life. And they are definitely a vibrational medicine. You know, they work on a subtle level. It's basically the immune system of Mother Earth. You know, when you think about a plant, it has all of these aspects that keep it healthy. You know, it, it can keep itself strong and full of nutrients and protected from its surroundings and has all of these uh, aspects to it that can support us as well. So there's been lots of research, especially in the last few years, on what plants and what essential oils can help with what things, but I'm just going to share a couple that are from my personal experience. And there's three different ways that you can use essential oils, the first one being topical and just putting it on your skin. Another one is putting it into a diffuser and or breathing it, so aromatically. And the last one is ingesting them. And if you're going to ingest them, you really have to make sure that you're getting a high quality essential oil. You can't just use any oil that you buy at the supermarket. Like it has to be a therapeutic grade. So I work with doTERRA and there's a couple other companies that do this as well. But it's super, super important once you start putting things into your body that you know how much it's going to um, or you know that it's going to be beneficial for your body. So one of the main things that I use is lemon. So I use lemon in my water every morning, the first thing when I get up. And then I also have, uh, I put it in a diffuser and it helps to clean the air, which is super important in Los Angeles. You know, our air quality here is not the greatest. So I have lemon running in my bedroom often and other rooms in the house. I also use ginger and black pepper. And I put those in my turmeric latte that I make in the morning. So those are really awesome ones. Another one that doTERRA has is called Breathe. And this one is unbelievable for healing any sort of respiratory issues and also for cleaning the air and um, supporting my lungs here living in L.A. Frankincense, which is like the Mac Daddy of all essential oils, like the saying is always, when in doubt, use frankincense. So it's um, really good for skin and anti-aging. It's great for meditation if you use it aromatically. Um, I put it on the bottoms of my feet almost every night just as a way of supporting my health. It's been shown to be anti-cancer and anti-fungal, anti-viral. It's all of the anti-bad things. <laughs> so it's a really good one. And then another blend that doTERRA has is called On Guard. And this is a blend of, um, it's got cinnamon and orange and clove, and it's a really good one to support the immune system. And so I'm using this often in the winter time. You know, I just did a bunch of traveling and I was around a lot of people that had colds and it was on the, you know, flights where there's all kinds of people coughing and everything. So I had On Guard with me and I put that on my bottoms of my feet. Uh, I take a couple of drops in my mouth sometimes when I feel like I need that extra support and I also use it on my toothpaste and beyond those like physical support that you get from the uh, essential oils there's also an emotional aspect to, that, to them so whenever I'm feeling stressed out I'll just take some lavender out and put a drop in my hands and just inhale it you know it's very calming and there's other ones that you can use for focus and mental clarity. And it's a vast, vast field of vibrational medicine that we'll do a separate podcast on that I'm really excited about. But I can definitely feel a shift in my life since I've been carrying them around with me every day and incorporating them into my everyday life. And it's about, you know, building this relationship with these plants. And it's been really, really wonderful. So those are just a few different ways that I really focus on maintaining a high vibration and staying happy and healthy and full of energy and doing all the things that I do in my life. And I hope that you find some value in these. And I'm really excited to bring all of these other guests onto the podcast and share with you a lot more deeper knowledge on a few of the things that I talked about, as well as brand new things that I don't really know a lot about, but I'm super curious and excited to have those conversations. 
So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this podcast and please stay connected, you know, subscribe, leave a comment and let's continue this relationship off the podcast. I'd really love, love to hear from you. And there is a Facebook uh, page if you want to like that and comment there, ask questions about anything that I've shared or if you have suggestions of different things that you want to learn about or people that I should interview, please, please reach out to me. And you can contact me through my website. It's ashnewmeister.com. It's, I'll leave everything in the show notes. So thanks again and have a beautiful, blessed day and looking forward to speaking with you soon. Bye.